Grace to you and peace from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. After a loved one dies, we naturally weep. We also cry because we will not be able to see them again or talk with them. We hug one another and weep upon their shoulders. Death is an enemy. It's an enemy because it separates us from our loved ones. Have you lost a spouse, a parent, a child, a grandparent, a friend, a neighbor? I'm sure all of us here who have attended one or more funerals in our lifetime. In our text for today, a widow of Nain was crying because of the death of her only son. She cried earlier at the death of her husband, and now she cries at the death of her only son. No wonder there was a large crowd there that day to be present in order to comfort her in her grief. This morning, I want to talk with you about grief, what we go through the, uh, during the death of a loved one, but I also want to talk with you about the comfort of the gospel and the peace and the joy we have in Christ's death and his resurrection. Because Jesus lives, we too shall live. First of all, the death of a loved one brings both sadness and also joy. The death of a loved one brings sadness because they are no longer here. We can no longer talk with them. The chair is empty. Death causes us to mourn and to cry. When Jesus said to the widow of Nain, do not weep, what he simply meant is, woman, I am the resurrection and the life. I am the one who can bring you from sorrow to joy, for I can raise your son from the dead. And Jesus knew what he was going to do. And so when he says, do not weep, it does not mean that we should not weep either during a time of death or a funeral. No, by no means. Jesus himself wept at the death of Lazarus. Weeping is a natural response when there is a, a death. Death is our enemy. Death first came into our world when Adam and Eve listened to the devil and ate the forbidden fruit. When they ate, the darkness of sin and death enter, entered our world. The wages of sin is death. The wages of Adam and Eve's sin was a spiritual and physical death. Death is proof that we are sinful by nature. A funeral is a strong preaching of the law. None of us can prevent death. We can prolong life, but we can never prevent it. All of us will someday die physically unless our Lord comes again the second time. The result of a fallen world, Cain killed his brother Abel. And I'm sure Adam and Eve wept at the death of their son, Abel. It's especially hard when parents have to bury their own child. It's not supposed to be this way. Children are to bury their parents. And I'm sure it's very hard for the widow of Nain to bury her own son. But the death of a loved one who has faith in Christ is not only a day of sadness, to be sure, but it's also a day of joy because they are with our Lord. They no longer suffer here on this earth. They are in a better place. It's a joy knowing that they were a baptized Lamb of God, redeemed with the blood of Christ. That they, in their baptism, they were clothed with the robe of Christ's righteousness. They were taught the faith. They believed in God as their creator and their redeemer. They trusted in the death and resurrection of Jesus for their salvation. They confessed their sin and they received the forgiveness of sins. They communed on a regular basis even to the end. It brings us joy knowing that they 
believed in Christ as their Savior. And because Jesus lives, they too live. For the widow of Nain, her sorrow was turned to joy when Jesus brought her son back to life again. The death of a loved one is sad to be sure, but it's also a day of joy knowing that they are with our Lord and that they too await the resurrection of the body on the last day. Many will say, Pastor, it's a bittersweet. It's bitter because it's sad, but also there is a sweetness because we know that they died with saving faith in Christ. St. Paul says in 1 Thessalonians 4, But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about those who are asleep, that, they, that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. The Christian will grieve. We do grieve. But we do not grieve as if we have no hope. But we have hope in the resurrection of our loved one who has faith in Jesus. But the death of the one who has no faith in Christ, we grieve not only their death to be sure, but we also grieve their eternal death. Dearly beloved in the Lord, those who reject the gospel will not see eternal life. And this is a warning for each and every one of us that we do not reject the gospel, but that we remain in the faith. So confess your sin and receive the forgiveness of sins. Do not despise preaching in his word, but gladly hear and learn it. Commune on a regular basis. Live a life of repentance and faith. For we never know when death will come. Therefore, we should always be prepared with faith in Christ. So the death of a loved one is a sad day to be sure. But it's also a day of joy. Knowing that Christ died and rose again for them. And they had saving faith in Christ. Second, the death of a loved one is a shock, but we pray that we will eventually accept it. Everything was going well for the widow of Zarephath. Elijah comes on the scene, and because of Elijah, the flour and the oil in the jar never ran out. They had, Elijah had bread. The, the widow of Zarephath and her son had plenty to eat. Everything was going well, but all of a sudden, her son became sick and died. I'm sure it was a shock for her. For the mother in Nain, apparently everything was going well, and then her, all of a sudden, her son died. Whether a death occurs suddenly, or whether we're at the the, the bedside of a loved one for a week or more, death is still a shock. We don't want it to happen, but it happened. We can't believe that they are gone. It's a reality that they're no longer physically here. Jesus' death is a reality also. He truly died. When? On that day we call Good Friday, so many years ago. So Jesus' death is not some myth. It's not some fairy tale. Why did Jesus die? He died in our place, bearing our sins, making the perfect payment for the sins of the whole world. He died to bear the wrath of God there upon the cross. He died to open and, wrote, and he rose again to open heaven for us, to defeat our enemy, the devil and to give us life and salvation. We do not have a God who knows nothing about suffering. Jesus suffered more than any of us will ever suffer. We do not have a God who knows nothing about death. Jesus died. He knows what death is. But yet, he rose again and he lives forevermore. <coughs> the difference between our death and the death of Jesus is that Jesus' death was a payment for sin. Jesus died in our place and on our behalf. Jesus died so that we could be saved. Jesus died to open heaven for us and all who believe. 
So the death of a loved one is a shock, to be sure, but we pray that we eventually will accept it. We accept the fact that they died, and we also accept, accept the fact that Jesus died. Yeah, he died for us and for our salvation. Third, <clears throat> the death of a loved one brings anger, uh, and also it is a day of trust, a trust in Christ Jesus our Lord. Death often causes us to ask the question, why? Why God? Why now? Why my loved one? We naturally get angry at God, and we get angry at others. We think that he should have prevented this death. Look at the widow of Zarephath in her Old Testament reading for today. After the death of her son, she asked Elijah, what have you, what have you against me, o, o man of God? Have you come to me to bring my sin to remembrance and to cause the death of my son? She was angry. And the death of her son brought also to remembrance her own sin. And the death of a loved one brings to remembrance not only their sin, which was the wages of, wages of sin, sin a, with death, but also it brings to remembrance our own fallen sinful nature as well. And that someday we will be just like that. <clears throat> but in reality, we should be angry at the devil. Because it was the devil who brought, who tempted Adam and Eve, who listened to the devil and ate the forbidden fruit. The devil is our enemy, not God. God is on our side. God came to our rescue in order to die and rise again to bring us life and salvation. And so God sent his only begotten son to fight against the devil. And he fought against the devil and Jesus won. Jesus also fought against death and Jesus won. In Christ there is life and salvation. The victory is yours in Christ. So someday we will walk through the valley of the shadow of death. But we will fear no evil because we know that Christ died and rose again for us and that heaven is ours. Heaven is our real home. This is only a temporary residency. So the death of a loved one does bring anger. But it also is a day of trust. A trust in Christ's victory over death and the grave. A trust in the righteousness of Christ. <clears throat> a trust that heaven is open for our loved ones and for us. And a trust that through faith in Christ, our loved ones are with our Lord. <clears throat> Fourth, the death of a, <clears throat> of a loved one is a day of regret and yet also a day of forgiveness. After the death of a loved one, our conscience is often troubled with regret. Oh, I wish I would have done this. I wish I would have said that. I wish I, I could have this. I wish the doctor could have. I wish that... And oftentimes we find ourselves in regret. Sometimes we didn't have the chance to say goodbye. But the gospel forgives our sin. And the gospel removes our sin as far as the east is from the west. So there are things that we regret to be sure but you are forgiven, forgiven in Christ. And where there is forgiveness, there is also life and salvation. Finally, the death of a, lo of a loved one is, is, is a day of loneliness, but it is also a day of comfort. The widow of Nain wept because she was lonely. Her husband died earlier and now her son and she has no one. When, a when the loved one goes on ahead of us, we are lonely, especially when a spouse dies. And your, memory, your memories of them will last a lifetime. We thank God for the many blessings they have been to, to us and we to them. But your only comfort is found in Christ. Christ and his gospel will bring you joy in the midst of sorrow. 
The gospel will bring you hope in the midst of grief. And the gospel will bring you comfort in the midst of loneliness. Jesus said to the widow's son, Young man, I say to you, arise. And the, and, and, and the, and the man stood up and came alive. Jesus' words had power. Jesus' words brought life. He spoke the life into the dead man. And so also today, the gospel speaks to you. It bespeaks us righteous, as the hymn goes. And because of Christ's death and his resurrection, you live now and you will live forever. Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Yes, we will see physical death, but because of faith in Christ, we will never die a second death. We will never die eternal death. Heaven is yours because of Christ. Eternal death will have no power over you. You were baptized into the death and resurrection of Christ. That was your funeral. In Christ, there is comfort and peace. In Christ, there is a peace that the world can never give. In Christ brings all joy and comfort. So, yes, there is sorrow in death. There is, it's a time of shock and anger. We regret things and we are lonely. But in Christ, there is joy. In Christ, there is comfort and peace. In Christ, there is a forgiveness of sins. In Christ, there is life and salvation. It is our prayer that God may keep us in the true faith, confessing our sins and receiving the forgiveness of sins, partaking of Christ's body and blood at the altar where we commune with the saints and angels and all those who have gone on ahead of us. May God continue to lead us and guide us so that when we will walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we will fear no evil because we know that Christ is our Savior. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus and a life everlasting. Amen.